Head-to-head, -head, Best Car Group Tests of 2016. Our month-by-month -month guide to the best group test that we conducted during 2016. We tested a wide range of cars against each other in 2016, and there were plenty of close results. Some cars were superb and some were outclassed, but what were our favorite group tests of 2016? New cars such as the Renault Megane, Fiat 124 Spider, Ford Focus R's, Mercedes E-Class, and McLaren 570s stormed onto the scene in 2016 and we had it all covered as they clashed with their nearest rivals. Plus, the likes of the Range Rover, Jaguar XE, Vauxhall Astra, and the Porsche 911 had their position near the top of their class thoroughly tested as they went also went head-to-head -head against talented new arrivals. Our group tests are the ultimate challenge for new cars, some instantly storm to the top of their segment, while others fail to hit the heights expected. So, if you're considering a new car, our group test verdicts show just what you should be looking for. All of our group test can be found here. January. New Mustang leaves F-Type trailing. Ford's sixth generation Mustang is the first to be developed for right-hand drive, and our test proved it was a great move. We pitted the Mustang against Jaguar's F-Type, and with its 412BHP 5.0 liter V8 and stunning fastback coupe looks, the Ford had the edge by offering muscle car pace for the price of a family saloon. Despite feeling cheap in places, it's a return to form for Ford, and a real performance bargain. February Focus R's wins Mega Hatch Shootout Just weeks after we first drove the new Focus R's, Ford gave us the chance to pitch the hot hatch against a pair of talented rivals. We took the Audi RS3 to Spain for a four-wheel drive showdown alongside the all-conquering Volkswagen Golf R. Ultimately we awarded the Ford top honors as it beat the VW by the narrowest of margins. A price just over £30,000 was the icing on the cake. March L200 remains pick of the pick UPS. The Nissan Navara arrived aiming to topple the mighty Mitsubishi L200. With its sophisticated independent rear suspension layout and claims of SUV driving dynamics, it looked good on paper. However, the L200's blend of lower running costs and more SUV-like refinement meant it saw off the challenge. Unfortunately for Isuzu, its D-Max was outclassed in this company. April New E-Class has Exec Saloon Edge. Featuring some clever autonomous driving systems, a beautiful interior and an all-new, more refined 2.0-liter diesel, Mercedes E-Class moved the executive saloon game on a step. We pitched it against the Jaguar XF and Audi A6 for its first road test, and the E-Class took victory on account of its refinement, safety, and comfort. The Jag countered the Mercedes class with brilliant driving dynamics and decent efficiency, but neither it nor the aging A6 could come close in terms of quality. May. Bentley SUV loses out to Ultimate Range Rover. The 161,375 pounds Bentayga is Bentley's first SUV and aims to steal sales from higher-end Range Rovers. We brought it together with the top-spec Range Rover Svato Biography for our test in May, and it combined explosive performance with luxury and refinement. But while the Bentley stood out with its amazing speed and sophisticated ride, it couldn't match the Range Rover's sense of occasion. It was a close-run thing, but the Range Rover stole victory thanks to a few more sophisticated details that delight every time you see them. The Bentley is based on the cheaper Audi Q7 4X4, and in some areas you can tell, whereas the SVA feels more bespoke. Neither is cheap to buy nor run the Range Rover's eye-watering depreciation means you'd lose more than £100,000 in the first three years but it offers more than the Bentley for less money. Once the Svato Biography's peerless off-road capability had been factored in, the Range Rover snatched road test victory. June McLaren has edge in supercar thriller. We're in a golden age for performance cars, thanks to hypercar hybrid tech. Yet our test of the McLaren 570s showed traditional power is still going strong. 
With its F1 style carbon fiber chassis, beautiful steering, ballistic turbo V8 and sensational looks, it saw off Porsche's all-weather 911 turbo and the stunning V10 engined Audi R8. The 570s went on to take 2016's best performance car title. July. GDI Club Sport loses out. Built to celebrate the iconic Golf GDI's 40th anniversary, Volkswagen's more focused Club Sport hit the UK in July. It had exclusivity on its side, with only 1,000 examples scheduled for Britain. However, it couldn't fend off Honda with its Civic Type R or seats revised Leon Cupra in our road test. We said the new Golf felt less than the sum of its parts and, for the money, the more usable Leon Cupra is a better bet. That's why the seat took victory. Best Infiniti yet still trails BMW rival. The QX30 is arguably Infiniti's strongest effort yet. Featuring a Mercedes chassis and 2.1-liter diesel engine, the premium compact crossover beat the Glot on which it's based in our road test in July. However, we reported that it's more of a jacked-up hatch. Add a limited range of trims and engines plus a steep price tag and the Infiniti lost out to the cheaper and more sophisticated BMW X1. August. Talented new Megana wins family hatchback battle. Despite the rise of crossovers and subs, the family hatch market is still booming in the UK, so when the new Renault Megana arrived earlier this year, it had its work cut out as we pitched it against the best cars in the class but it beat the tech-laden Vauxhall Astra and sportier seat Leon by a narrow margin, offering a mix of those cars' attributes while adding more refinement, a stylish design and a classy cabin loaded with kit into the mix. It isn't as pointy or fun to drive as the two rivals it took on, but the Megane edged ahead of the competition with its comfortable ride. A family hatch has to cover a number of bases, and with a massive, Best on test 434 liter boot plus decent performance from the 1.5 liter DCI diesel version we rated, that's exactly what the Renault does. To top it off, in Dynamic SNAV trim it was the cheapest car of our trio, yet offered the most kit. Ford SUV has edge over Mazda CX-5. Ford's edge SUV added an injection of American style when it hit the UK, offering bold, muscular looks compared with some of the more generically styled 4x4s. We tested it against the Mazda CX-5, and the bigger edge took victory thanks to its extra space and practicality. However, the Ford size means it's not as efficient as the Mazda on paper, so business users will pay more in tax. September Honda's new NSX takes on Porsche 911 Turbo. Honda was determined to take its time developing its stunning NSX supercar. So a quarter of a century after the brilliant original upset the performance car order, its long-awaited replacement aimed to repeat the feat against the sophisticated Porsche 911 Turbo on challenging Welsh roads. Featuring stunning looks, a high hybrid power plant and the promise of unrivaled driving engagement, the Honda was billed as a supercar you could use every day. The Honda's electrically assisted 3.5-liter V6 serves up devastating pace, but the beautifully balanced mid-engined handling and seamless integration of advanced mechanicals really stands out. Yet the brutally fast 911 proved too much for the Honda. Not only was it faster and more involving, it delivered greater usability. The new NSX has been worth the wait, but the supercar world has moved on in the past 25 years. MX-5 loses out to 124 Spider. The Mazda MX-5 has ruled the small roadster roost for decades, but this two-seat tearaway faced stiff competition as late summer allowed for a thrilling drop-top duel. The Fiat 124 Spider shares many of its mechanicals and sheet metal with the Mazda they're even built in the same factory. However, the Italian car's 1.4-liter turbo engine delivered more real-world punch than the Mazda's naturally aspirated 2.0-liter, and it took the win. Kia Sportage is our top-used purchase. Auto Express is always first for car news and reviews, but for many drivers nothing beats a second-hand bargain and thanks to our annual used car awards, these buyers were spoiled for choice in September. 
With everything from runarounds to performance cars, there was something for everyone. We picked 17 category winners, but only one could claim the title of used car of the year. After lots of deliberation, our judges handed the trophy to the recently replaced Kia Sportage. VW is crowned tow car of the year. In mid-September we once again teamed up with the Caravan Club to run the rule over the best tow cars of the year. Stability, comfort, handling and pulling power were tested as we hitched up 47 new models at the Millbrook testing facility in Bedfordshire. There were six category winners and a pair of SUV champs, but the major plaudits were reserved for the overall winner the VW Passat Alltrack. October Tipo has the edge in value battle. Fiat has realigned its Tipo as a value-focused hatchback, so we put it up against a couple of rivals whose prices are often heavily discounted, the Skoda Rapid and Citroën C4. The all-new Fiat came out on top, thanks to a relatively strong engine and a comfortable chassis. It was also the cheapest car to buy outright, the least costly on finance, the cheapest to insure and the best option for business users. November. High Class Julia runs rivals close. The Stelvio SUV wasn't the only model breaking new ground for Alfa Romeo in 2016. The brand also took a shot at the lucrative compact executive class with its ambitious Julia. Featuring head turning looks, an engaging rear wheel drive chassis, and a surprisingly upmarket cabin, the sleek saloon proved to be Alfa's best effort for years. Yet while it came close to victory, it just missed out to a pair of supremely talented rivals in the shape of the Jaguar XE and BMW 3 Series. Q2 Trail CX3 in clash of small subs. Audi arrived late to the compact crossover class, but was determined to make an impact with its new Q2. Sharp looks, assured driving dynamics and low running costs were highlights, but the Audi was undermined by its high price and a lack of standard equipment. In the final reckoning, the Q2 did pip the Mercedes-Glot, but it had no answer to the talented and well-equipped Mazda CX-3.